If you've ever been to Virginia Tech, the name Burris might ring a bell. To you, it might refer to the hall, or possibly you've read somewhere that he was a university president. Or maybe you just think about the music that plays from the tower as you walk across the drill field on your way to class every morning. But did you ever stop to think, who exactly was Burris? And what is the story behind the building and the music? Dr. Julian Ashby Burris was Virginia Tech's eighth president. He served for 26 years, starting on June 12, 1919, when he was elected by the Board of Visitors. Well, let's talk about several major changes in the student population that clearly come into view in his first few years. Early on in his presidency, he went to his Board of Visitors and he said, you know, we've really got to, ex to start accepting women into this place. And he outlined why. And that began to change the place. There may be only one woman in a class, there may not be any at all, but there's at least some female presence in the student population. When he came to campus, well, all the students were men, and most of them were in the Corps of Cadets. They were required to be. The student population was rapidly growing. It was outgrowing the number of spaces in any of the uh, barracks. He's the man who presided over making the Corps of Cadets something that was uh, optional for upperclassmen. And so by giving people the option to move out of the Corps, that meant that suddenly there would be a growing population of, of civilian undergraduates on campus. The numbers were small, again, in both civilian male students and female students, but these were huge changes that he set in motion. But besides greatly changing the student population, there was another huge thing that Dr. Burris brought onto campus. In 1934, President Burris was approved a grant and loan of $1 million by the Public Works Administration to create buildings on campus. One of these buildings, completed in 1936, was Burris Hall, but at the time it was known as the Teaching and Administration Building. The um, plan for Burris Hall was to build a significant administration building, but also one that allowed large assemblies with a very large auditorium, because Prior to that, the War Memorial Gym was about the largest building to assemble in. A 3,000 seat on one floor auditorium was rather unusual, I'd say, for the times. And then the front section of the building was a much smaller office area than you see now. And then, of course, a west wing and rear addition was built in 1968 and an east wing in 1970. They're celebrating his 25 years in office, and the Board of Visitors announces that they've made this decision. And appropriately enough, after all, it's the administrative center of the, of the big and growing campus. But if you head 140 miles north to Harrisonburg, you might find on JMU's campus, they have a Burris Hall as well. That's because Dr. Burris was also their first president. However, besides the Hokie Stone exterior on Virginia Tech's building, there is one other quite unique feature. In 1936, when the Teaching and Administration Building was first completed, if you visited the hall at noon and looked up at the tower, you would hear nothing. Because there were no bells in the original structure. Rather, the story begins on one of the other ends of the drill field during the construction of the War Memorial Chapel in the 1950s there was evidently money available to add the Carillon de Burris. So the speakers that are placed on the top of the tower of Burris were ideal to kind of, kind of permeate the campus and provide a more surround sound for uh, a Carillon. So in 1958, $28,000 were used to purchase the first Carillon. This system worked by ringing solid brass chimes inside five environmentally sealed cases. Electronic pickups would pipe the sound to the top of verse, where eight speakers would play the music to be heard all over campus. This system could be played on a keyboard or could read music from a roll of paper, similar to a player piano. In 1981, the Virginia Tech Foundation provided a grant to repair the Carillon, upgrading it to a cassette transport system. So, is this the system we hear today? Well, not quite. To find out, let's visit the Carillon Room. 
On the third floor of Burris, there's a door labeled C13 that looks almost the same as the rest, but inside you'll find a small room that houses the Carillon system. Eventually, the cassette transport system began to break down, and repairs were constant and it was costly to maintain. So in 1997, the class of 58 donated the new electronic Carillon that we have today. This system, unlike the old one, is fully electronic, so it no longer uses chimes. But it still has a keyboard where a caroliner, like the late Sharon Knight, can play the bells. It's very different than a piano. It, if I had to compare it to something, it'd be more like an organ. And rather than using rolls of paper, this new system uses memory cards called auto bell cards. Each card has a different theme, and songs are read from the card and stored into the carillon's memory to be played automatically in the afternoon and early evening. So as we leave the hall, take in your surroundings. The sights, the sounds, and the people. One man's legacy was a lasting impact on a university for the better. What will yours be?